Okay, YouTube, this is Alex. I have one of these master lock things on my front door at the moment. It doesn't have a key in it, um, but the realtor wanted to use it to uh, leave keys for some inspector or something that was going to be looking at my house. So it wasn't a big fan of it, given the uh, given who it's made by. Um, but it wasn't mine, so I didn't meddle with it. What I did do is I bought one to see how easy it would be to decode or bypass. Um, and I'll show you. Um, it's pretty much the same technique that you may have seen on other of these types of locks. Um, where you use a, a little feeler to sort of read the, um, the little notch on the side of the wheel, which of course is much harder on camera than when you're just doing it in your living room, but That's definitely one there. Something like seven. The newer ones. Um, that they use in this area are made by a company called Supra. Um, they made other much crappier ones back in the day, but um, these are electronic. Um, and I'm pretty sure I can work out a way to bypass them, but it would be pretty tricky. Um, and they're made, they seem to be made reasonably well. Um, I don't know about how secure the software is, but I'm not not a crypto geek, so there's other people online for that. But what I'm attempting to do is feel for the little edge of the thing, which I got a very positive lock on on the other one. And I think, okay. That's my alignment is off. Okay. So I've got nine five seven two. Let me just double check all of these. Um, that's more like a seven. You can sort of see the little thing rock up. It's because it's sitting down in the notch. And then when I roll the wheel back. Okay, so I know it's not nine, not nine seven, seven two, but. it's going to be something relative to this. So I'm pretty sure it's not one click off. So I'm just going to start with two clicks on each wheel. Okay. That's not it. Haha. There we are. Whoops. And that's it open. Now, first time I did this particular lock, it took me, I don't know, a little longer than that, largely because I had to figure out a tool to get in there. I just had a little better, oddly, and a little better tolerances than that Brinks um, that Bill did the other day. Um,
the tool I've got is a piece of uh, stainless steel five thousandths of an inch feeler gauge or shim stock that I've cut and used a grinder to sort of shape down and then very slightly tapered or beveled the the end just very just sort of tapped it up against the grinder and then polished it a little bit so it would slide in there better so here's the box um, zooming out again and I haven't taken it apart yet but okay so this doesn't want to come apart I think there's two more screws on the bottom here then and this thing is uh, pinned in so it's not gonna come apart but I can tell you about two other um, actually good design features on this um, one is the shackle um, the shackle is run by this little is released by this little um, lever here you pull that up and then you can lock it onto something um, and it works by there's a bar with two little notches and when it slides this way the notches move out of the way of that thing and you can go in and you close it it that thing returns so in order for the bolt to open that little lever has to move this way there's no other way for it to go okay turns out and I can just show you this if it's open and this lever is back because it can't return because the notch is there or the the, the uh, notch is hitting the, the uh, shackle you can't close this and it's because part of the body of the lock here runs into this little guy the corollary is that if this is locked and this is closed there's no way that you're going to be able to shim that open or stick something in there and um, uh, manipulate that lever open. So that's kind of a nice design, um, something you don't, something kind of thoughtful you don't see very often. Um, and then the other thing is the reset feature, and this resets just like most of these things where we have the combination dialed in. You you pull that up and then you can twiddle with the dials. Um, and on so many of these things, it's this little bar that moves side to side. Um, I did a really bad job of getting that on frame, but so it's this little thing here. Push that in, but this little pin comes out, and if you notice, that pin runs into the side of the case when, or the body when it's extended, and when the thing is closed, it would sit against the inside of the door here. So two things: you can't close it with the reset button engaged probably a good thing. And the second thing is that if it is closed, you can't somehow manipulate that release button into position um, because that little pin has to come out and hit the and, and move and it would hit the body. Um, the other thing is if you don't have just the right angle on this, it doesn't want to open. So the physical design of this is reasonably secure. I mean, it's all metal. I don't know what kind, but you know, it's probably, I would hope it's steel. Um, let's see, shackle steel, uh, body is, I don't know, <laughs> some of the parts are steel, some are not, this might be steel, it might be aluminum, um, but, you know, it's made out of metal, um, and, uh, you know, decent construction, you'd have to bash on it a lot to get it open, but the primary locking mechanism, the, this combination lock is vulnerable to the standard decoding technique, which, I don't know, to me, I don't really want this on my house. Um, it's no better than that Brinks that, that Bill was working with. Um, and, and unlike the Brinks, this ends up stuck on your front door, hanging off your door handle. So everyone in the neighborhood walking by can see that you have um, the key to your house in a crappy padlock um, hanging on your front door, just waiting for someone to get in. So. And um, the last thing is that my realtor uses the same combination for pretty much all of her locks, and it's pretty predictable. This is not it, because this is my lock, but um, so there's not even good sort of key control, if you will. <laughs> so um, if your house is on the market and they want to put a box on your house, have them get something a little better, at least a, a, one of the dial combination locks that are a little harder to manipulate, or one of the electronic ones that requires um, some encryption 
um, at least the person that needs to be a lot geekier to defeat it um, or use a whole lot more force. So anyhow, um, master lock, key box, um, decoded, opened, and raped, I guess, in, in discussion. So this is Alex. Um, have fun. Keep it legal. And remember, only pick your own locks or locks you have permission to pick. Cheers.